What's up my central unit, it's the central man here, so this is episode 1 of the Star Wars movie review series, so today I'm reviewing the first movie of the Star Wars trilogy, that is Star Wars episode 4, A New Hope. I'm taking a break of reviewing superhero shows slash movies from the DC and Marvel Universe, for now until Moon Knight. Haven't like confirmed for the date when the show aired on the Disney Plus app. I can't wait. It'll be later on in the year. Trust me. Anyway, so I was planning to review Star Wars movies for months now because I grew up watching Star Wars, seeing all ten movies. Um, yeah, I know eleven movies. You got Solo. Uh, I'm not talking about um, Star Wars Clone Wars. I've seen the show, yeah, yeah, I've seen the t the 2D animated series, the 3D animated series. Um, I saw, I, I really saw the movie, yeah, they did a movie in 2008, you know, Star Wars Clone Wars. That was just setting up the 3D animated series of the show. It's not really my cup of tea, you know. I'm just focused on the live action Star Wars movies from the old movies, the prequels, and the recent Star Wars films. You know, I can't wait, you know. That will probably take me shorter than when I reviewed the MCU movies. That took me seven months. You know, I started January last year and edited that summer. You know, I think it was July. You know, when I reviewed Star Wars, uh, not Star Wars, Spider-Man Far From Home. That Yeah, that was long. This will be a little shorter. That will probably take me about two, three months. Probably about March, April time. It'll be, sh it'll be shorter, trust me, so... Anyway, before we get to more in this movie review, need a, need a drink. My throat is a little bit dry. <sighs> so, anyway, so, yeah. I can't wait, you know. Ten, yeah, I think, yeah, eleven movies. So, you got, like, yeah, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, uh, Return of the Jedi, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Force Awakening, The Last Jedi, and Rise of the Skywalker, Rogue One, and Solo. We'll get to, yeah, the Han Solo movie, we'll get to that, you know, later on in the series. So, anyway, so let's talk about Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. This movie was released in 1977, created by George Lucas. He is a spy, uh, because he watched um, a fan of Flash Gordon. I think his rise of fame for George Lucas is he did a movie called Ameri uh, it was it American Graffiti. Haven't really saw that. Um, so yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of George Lucas. You know, I think some people over the years kind of spies him, but without the Star Wars movies from you know like the um the old movies to the prequels, I don't think I'll become a fan of Star Wars. You know, I really like his work. You know. I think he ended up doing um, the Indiana Jones movies, you know, after Star Wars, you know, like that was um, 80, what, what, I don't know what, yeah, the, you know, Indiana Jones movie came out, I think it was, seven, I think it was 79, it was just like year before Empire Strike Back to 1989, so a decade of Indiana Jones, and yeah, he came in the Crystal Skulls, I haven't seen, I've seen that movie, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, fucking shit. I might, I might do an Indiana Jones movie review series in the future. You know, there's only, what, four movies? Depending if it's on the Disney Plus app, who knows? Fingers crossed. Anyway, so, let's, yeah, let's talk about Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. So, let's talk about the cast of this movie. Um, so, the cast of this movie had Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. I heard, I heard, I heard like, there's legends that the original name for Luke's character, yeah, it would be... The original cat's name is Luke, but his surname will be Star Killer instead of Star Walker. I don't know. I think there was many scripts, you know, he's supposed to be like a 70, 80 year old man. It won't be believable. I think they have, it's a good decision to have Luke being a young man, you know. At the time, I think Mark Camel's about in his like 20s. I think he's 70 right now, but um, the, the original cast, uh, Lucas said in the interview that he just want unknown stars for his movie. He's not want like top quality, you know, like big name stars. Um, he just want like character, like stars that 
they're like unknown but like like or rising stars but it's just what it is anyway so the original person to play Luke Skywalker I found on Wikipedia that the original guy supposed to be playing Luke Skywalker instead of Mark Hamill was a guy called William Cat and that's his name but I'm guessing he turned it down I don't know this is before my time you know this is like somewhere in the 70s I'm 27 I'm born in 1994 anyway so you had uh, you had Harrison Ford, um, Harrison Ford as Han Solo. I like I really like that character. Um, um, and also you got Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia Organa of Alderaan. It's a damn shame that Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher they never like make it as a big Hollywood star. You know. I mean, um, Mark Hamill appeared in a movie called Conflict Summers and the big red, was it the big red one? Carrie Fisher appeared in Blues Brothers and Shampoo. I don't know, I don't really follow her acting career. My first exposure to Carrie Fisher is the Star Wars movies and then he, she, in, you know, decades later, she, you know, she is Peter's boss from Family Guy, you know, Angela. But, um, yeah, it's a damn shame they never, like, make it as big Hollywood Stars, you know, the other out of the three, the, the one who made it was Harrison Ford. Um, and I heard like he worked with uh, George Lucas in the uh, American Graffiti film from was it 1973? And there, there was like many, many top Hollywood stars, so, and soon to be upper corner stars, addition for the role of Han Solo, Sylvester Stallone, Robert De Niro, um, Jack Nicholson, Kurt Russell. Um, Steve Martin, but yeah, Harrison got the um role. So, uh, when I see Sylvester Stallone, I found it on the Wikipedia page said Sylvester Stallone. That'd be really good. I it's like it was like he had a he came off with that success a year prior of the Rocky movie. But yo, know, Sly is Han Solo. I'll I'll, I'll, take, I'll take it. Anyway, so um, you got Anthony Daniels. Oh, by the way, um, the the original actress playing um, they were going for Jodie Foster. For you know, for you know, audition for the role as Princess Leia, but she kind of declined it. You know, took it down. Um, yeah, and I heard like uh, like uh, Carrie Fisher has to drop a lot of weight. You know, she was a bit. She, I think she was. She's not really kind of fat, but she. I think she was a bit chubby, and then she lost ten. She dropped ten pounds for the role from the character. Um, but um, anyway, so. Let's get to the rest of the cast. So, um, you had yeah Anthony Daniels as Free CPO. And, and oh, by the way, um, I I should have said late Carrie Fisher because sadly, some of these actors and actresses played in the in the old Star Wars movies and the prequels, they're sadly no longer with us. You know, you got the late Carrie Fisher. Yeah, you, as, yeah Anthony Daniels is still alive. Anthony Daniels as C three PO. You had Kenny Baker playing the role as R2-D2. Sadly also passed away. I think she passed away. I think he passed away days before Carrie Fisher. Um, anyway, so... Um, yeah, um, I never knew like, Kenny Baker played R2-D2. I think he's, I thought it's just a robot, you know, with, ble with bleeping noise. You know, because R2-D2 doesn't talk. It goes like... It, it, R2 goes... Beep boop beep boop, you know, the bleeps. Um, the late Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca. I don't know, I don't know if he's muscular, but um, I don't think he's muscular at the time. But I think he was audit also auditioned for the role of Dark Vader, but I don't know. I think he changed his mind, he wants to become a hero instead of a, a villain. You got the late uh, David Prowse, not Prowser. I heard Americans call David Prowse, uh, David Prowse, Prowser. No. Prowse. There's no R after E. You know, I'm not digging Americans, I'm just saying. But, um, yeah, David Prowse as Darth Vader. People say his voice is Darth Vader. You know, people, you know, I think people were, people think James Earl Jones, you know, played the role as Darth Vader. No, he is the voice of Darth Vader. David Prowse is the voice. No, not voice. No, David Prowse is the, um, the the guy who plays Dark Vader, James Old Jones, did the voice. I heard like it was just the original idea was supposed to be David Prowse, you know, 
just act and has some dialogues as Darth Vader. Unfortunately, he's, he's from the West Country. I think he's from Bristol. You can find on YouTube, you know, him speaking. And uh, you can tell his voice didn't, like, work because of his accent. So, um, they were going for Orson Welles to, you know, voice Darth Vader. But I think they got they t give the job to James O. Jones. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know Orson Welles. I don't know his voice. I don't know. I don't, I'm going to move up, move the conversation forward, the topic forward actually. Um, James Earl Jones being, you know, being the first Darth Vader was a right decision. You know, I thought he's Brit. I thought he's British. Um, James Earl Jones, but no, Earl Jones is from America because Darth Vader sounds British. You know, you know, but um, I like I like James Earl Jones. You know, voice and Darth Vader because he had that commanding voice. Um, I think the only notable live action movie he was in was Conan the Barbarian from the movie from 1982 stars uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I might review, review it in the future. You know, I heard it, it, it would put Arnold's career on the map and then funny that line and then two, three years later he's the Terminator. Anyway, so he's the voice of uh, Darth Vader. And sadly, like I said, David Prowse is no longer with us. He was a former, yeah, he was a former bodybuilder. We'll get to more of Vader's character later on, but, um, we talk about Prowse's, um, back, uh, ground. He's a former bodybuilder, former weightlifter. He appeared in acting, I think he's appeared on a movie called Clockwood Orange. He appeared on adverts, like, Crossing the Road adverts. I think he was the Green Cross Man. And then, and then in the following year, in 1978, he trained Christopher Reed for the role of Superman. So that's, I'm really looking forward to it, um, reviewing Superman in the future. Anyway, so, um, I think, uh, you got, um, Alec Guinness, the late Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi, or eight or Ben Kenobi. I don't, I don't think he was reference of Obi-Wan, but just Ben Kenobi. Um, this was his only Star Wars movie. He never appeared ever, ever again. He died in 2000 because I think he dissociate himself because he ended up getting like people like a lot of Star Wars fans end up like contacting him you know it's just what it is you just want to live a private life um you got uh, the late Peter Cushion as uh was it Grand Morph Tarkin um we'll get to his like the CGI character in Rogue One in the future but um I like, I like he's kind of like Tarkin was kind of like Darth Vader's um Second in command, and also by the way, the I think the cast give Prowse a nickname. They called him Dark Farmer because of his West Country accent. Anyway, so I think that's it. I think I, I think I covered most of the main characters, not the major ones. Um, you know, you know, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Free C Three PO, R Two D Two, Tarkin, Darth Vader. Um. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. So let's be, yeah, let's talk about yeah, let's talk let's talk about. It. Um, and by the way, the, the original I think the original beginning of this movie has just focus on Luke Skywalker, you know, hanging around with his friends. But I think they they uh, yeah they kind of change it in the last minute. You know, I'm I'm glad they did the beginning scenes uh kicked off when you know the Empire evade the Rebels base and kidnap Princess Leia because the goal. But, you know, it, it, it planned the seeds like decades later for the Rogue One movie. That's the prequel to this movie. You know how they got the plans, how to blow up the Death Star. So yeah, yeah, they can, yeah, the stormtroopers you know shoot down some rebel guards and and kidnap and kidnap Princess Leia. So I like I, I like the chemistry between R two D two and free CP uh free CPO. Man, the name I can't pronounce it properly. Free, yeah, free CPO. Um, anyway, so yeah, free CPO. The K, yeah, it's like it's a yeah. You can tell this movie. I know. I know, I see a lot of Star Wars movies. And I never see them swear, but it's just kind of like some crappy insults. You know, they kind of walk. Yeah, they kind of separate way. You know, they're in the, the skate from the um the the, the, the skate pod. They landed towards a planet called Tatooine. They kind of went their separate ways, and then I think they got kidnapped by Jawas. Jawas is these little creatures wearing like brown cloaks and they're finished kidnapped robots and selling them. So 
Yeah, um, C-3PO is a what's it? A protocol droid. Droid speaks many languages, and we'll get to we'll get to Revenge of the Sith in the future. He speaks Ewok. So we'll get to that. Um. Anyway, so Luke's motive in this movie is basically trying to get off Tatooine because he found this message of Princess Leia. And yes, uh, Uncle Owen. He's like, I think this R2D2 unit has been stolen. You know. He said, you know, R2 doesn't talk. He said he's looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Do you know what he's thinking? Oh, um, and then Uncle... You can tell Uncle Owen kind of knew. Because Luke lives with his... Aunt, uh, uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. Um, yeah, Owen... I think Owen knows. But um, he, he said, um, he said like, you know, he doesn't exist anymore. He died at the same time as your father. And Luke says, he knows my father. And um, he said about, like, he wants to leave, go to the Academy of this year. But he said, no, after the harvest, we need you in the harvest. Wanna, until we make enough, I'm going to hide some hands. You can go next year. But I think mean, you can tell, like, Tatooine is a shithole. I hate to say it, it's a proper shithole, you know. It, you know, it's a shithole planet. And also, people got pissed off the um, when they re-edit the, movie, the original movies, you know. I think it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some 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 scenes a lot cool, like the spaceship us CGI, but and some of the creatures. But Jabba the Hutt, not so much. And by the way, um, the original, I never knew Jabba was in this movie. I thought he was paid in only, Revenge, not Revenge, uh, Return of the Jedi, the 1983 movie. But um, unfortunately, yeah, the original idea for Jabba was supposed to be a man, and the actor was played by Declan. New Holland, New Holland. I like. I think he was all, not. Too, he was all right, but I think you know. I think they changed plans. I think it has to do with his Irish accent. I thought he was more Amer American. If if he was like this um, Italian American playing the roles Jabba as a human, maybe I kind of get it. But I'm glad to make Jabba as this slug creature. So anyway, so <clears throat> um. And it's funny that, um, yeah, on, you know, Uncle Owen, he's not really being a dick towards Luke. He's just going to say, hey man, we're just not, we don't really, we need, need you right now. He's not, I think he's trying to get away, not, not find out the truth who he really is, who he's really, his dad is. Yeah, he met, you know, he ended up like, you know, uh, R2-D2 was basically um, escaped and Luke got attacked by the Sam people riding on, not riding on Banthers, but... And then, yeah, uh, Ben Kenobi chased him off, and then Luke and Ben met, and basically said, like, you know, this, he said to Luke, that, you know, he said, R2-D2 R2 is looking for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Do you know him? Are you related? I never heard that name for a very long time. He's me. And he's not, he's not dead yet. Um, he said, to, yeah, and he also said to his dad, you know, his dad used to be a Jedi Knight, you know, I think Luke says he used to be a... Uh, a a, a, a naga get sorry, I need a drink. Um, my throat is a little bit dry. Um, another yeah, another gator of a sp what was it a space freighter? But um, Ben says you know, you know he was a Jedi Knight. He's the Jedi Knight like me. Um, he he said he his dad got killed by Darth Vader. He you know he turned on basically working with the Empire in extinct. Uh, extent the Jedi Knight, you know they're kind of like guardians of the old Republic, you know from you know from order. <laughs> anyway, so he said like Vader to come to the Force, and then he said to the Force, he, uh, yeah, Ben said the Force says the Force penetrates us. It is basically a, a magical energy field that um, created by living things. It surround us. It penetrate us. Anyway, so uh, yeah, and it's funny. Like he has, he said one line. It's one of the trademark name. The trademark word of Star Wars is "Let the Force be with you." I don't know. I'm I I'm been a Star Wars fan for decade, but almost like twenty plus years. I never knew. I don't know what the meaning. What they say, let uh, let the Force be with you. I'm 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 guessing good luck. I think I do not know. So yeah, and he gave um, he gave Luke the lightsaber, 
Um, this dungeon, you can see the poster of Luke. You see multiple, some posters of Luke holding the lightsaber. He never used the lightsaber. I think he, like, used it once for well, training, but not actually fighting and killing, um, stormtroopers. I'm guessing, like, the first two movies, you know, this movie and Empire Strikes Back, you know, Luke is basically training to become a Jedi Knight. And when you get to, you know... Um, Revenge of the Sith, he's already a Jedi Knight, you know, it's just what it is, it's not, it's origin how he became that character, you know, be the one who take the, um, the, the good side, the, the force side, the good side of the force to defeat the Empire. Anyway, um, so, yeah, also, like, yeah, two people, like, some of these characters never got along, you know, you got R2-D2, 3CPO never got along, Han and Luke also never got along, like, they're in the, the Millennium Falcon, and then, you know, the, you know, Luke is doing the, uh, training, you know, training, and it was this ball shooting, like, red lasers, and it, it got, Luke got shot in the hip with the, with the laser, and then, <laughs> And then, yeah, you basically had um, Han doing the snarky remark. Uh, yeah, he's been all snarky. The remark, the snarky remarks, you know. And then Luke says, you, yeah, yeah. Han says, a hulky religion and an agent weapon is no match of you getting shot in the hip. Or hit by, uh, you got shot in the side. Luke says, you know, you don't even, you don't even believe in the force. And Han says, kid. I traveled one side to the ga one one side of the galaxy to another. I see some strange things, but I never see something that makes me believe there's an all powerful force that's controlling. There's no mystical energy force that control uh, control my destiny or choose my destiny. It's just you know basically you know, tricks and nonsense. He's basically like I'm not interested. Yeah, you know, Han's character, he's just like, don't give a shit. He cares about money. Basically, you know, he just cares about money. You know, like, they met in the uh, the bar scene in Tatooine. And, the you know, he offered, offered it to pay. Basically, I think they offered him like 10 million, 10, 10,000. I don't know what currency in the Jedi world. 10,000, whatever. And, you know, and they never, you know, basically, they're just... I think they're just like Luke and Ben just swiddle them to get a ride towards Alderaan, and then it's funny that um, you know they're in the de they're in the Death Star the Death Star. Sorry, I'm stumbling, but um, in the Death Star, dressing up like stormtroopers, and you know, and <laughs> it's just like um, when Luke kind of tricked Han because after you know after we'll get to one scene shortly after. You know, they blow up, uh, they used the Death Star to blow up Alderaan. Luke said, Luke said, trying to get Han to help him to save, like, escape Leia from prison. He says, Luke said to Han, says, she's rich. You know, if you help her, your world will be more wealthy, more wealth than you possibly imagine. So, he kind of changed his mind, and he did get his award in the end. And, um... Yeah, he said like um, he said to Luke that you know you know you know they need like you you know you're gonna turn your back on them you know it's all I can't remember the dialogue I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk about it but um, um he said like they this they're, they're up against you know you know it's all about you know it's about to happen they're up to against you know they need a pilot like you you're gonna turn their back on them. And Han says, I remember the dialogue by the way, anyway, Han says, kid, what's the use, what's the point having an award if you're not around to use it, you know, he's basically, his goal is trying to pay the debt from Jabba, because he, he basically said, he, I think Jabba friend Han, like, use, basically, he's, you know, don't fail me, or otherwise I'll put a bounty across your head, you end up, you know, it's funny that he end up getting, um, trapped in, was it Carfinite in Empire Strikes Back, and then, in the Jabba part in Revenge of the Sith, you know, we'll get to those two two further movies later in the future. But um, anyway, so um, he did save Luke. You know, Luke is the one to be the one to you know be, like lead the like the good side of the Force against the Empire, dark side of the Force. Um, he's the one who shot like blow up the Death Star. 
Um, he's finally like, there's like Vader and two of his guards about to kill Luke and Han just came out of nowhere, shoot, shoot him. Because you can tell like Han has, you know, at least he's got some, like, um, really he has some, at least he's got some, a heart, I'm trying to say. And then he, he, after that, you know, they kind of celebrating. I think Leia, Leia, Leia says, um, "You're more, you're more than money." You know, he, you know, because he cares about money. You know, a guy they, I think there's one nitpick about him. He's not, yeah, it's not enough to flesh out the character. You know what? When yeah, we'll get back to the Tatooine part. Um, uh, when Luke um, left. Left, you know, it, you know, so the Empire, you know, they shot down Jawas, you know, if they know when the robots got traced, you know who sold them that lead up home and then went, went, you know, fly towards the heart, the house, and they find out and saw his parents. Not actually, they're not really parents, the un aunt and uncle, because and this is, you know, because his dad is Darth Vader and his mom Padme, was it Padme from the prequels that played by um Natalie Portman. You know, died. You know, at birth. You know, not die at birth. You know, die. You know, die giving birth to Luke and Leia from Revenge of the Sith. We'll get to that. Get to the prequels in the future. You know, you know, Padme is or the Padam Padaman. I call it Padme because anyway, let's move on. Move on. Um. Um. Anyway, so seeing seeing like Baru and Owen just just skeletons. Um. The one they could nitpick about. Um. Mark Hamill, he has no facial expression, you know, I've been mean, like, the Fox, uh, you know, because Fox at the time owned the rights of, yeah, it's Lucas, Stu Lucas Studio and Fox on the, uh, I think they own the rights of Star Wars, I think they were going to have an established star, I think with Mark Hamill, he likes facial expression, he doesn't look, he looks a bit angry, but not like upset, like, you know, because Owen and Beru raised him up, to, like their own. To see them dead, it's it's a good decision. Like make the the fans of this movie want them to hate the Empire. Anyway, so um, that's just what it is. So, and it's and then I think the next live action. Story, I don't know. He appeared in um the live action flash shows from the nineties and the the mid twenty tens. You know, the the one with Grant Gustin in it and the the nineteen nineties. Show he plays the trickster. Yeah, he also is known for the DC stuff. He, you know, voice of the Joker and the the Batman stuff and the Arkham games. Um. Um. And then he, yeah, he's the trickster. And then the the last notable live action movie he was in, Mark Hamill, was the first Kingsman movie. I don't, it's a shame he never make it as uh, you know, make it big. You know, he's still big, but not. Like big, big, like uh, Harrison Ford, he could be, you know, if he had more like facial expressions, you know, emotion. He didn't show a lot of emotional. It's, it, I gotta tell you, if like if Ray, if they did the scene with Ray, with whether it's their fake parents or someone or no, she'll cry, you know, if the Empire did to them. You know, if I if I was Luke, you know, I'll cry, burst down, feel the hate. <sighs> Need a drink. Anyway, so um, and also he got a bad reaction when uh, Ben got killed off. You know, the only, there's only one lightsaber fight in this movie, and then the next couple of movies there's over the decades there's lightsaber fights. I think the only movie or two movies I haven't seen Solo. The only movies that never did a lightsaber fight has to be Rogue One. Anyway, so like. And also, you know, yeah, you know, because, um, Dark Vader, you know, presents Obi-Wan, because they know, because he already knows they're there, they're there to temporarily, like, shut down the tractor beam, basically, because after, you know, let's, let, let's get to Alderaan. I forgot to talk about the Alderaan part, um, we'll get to more, we'll get to that part, um, after I talk about the Death Star bit. Um, yeah, basically, um... Well, Alderaan, because their mission, you know, Luke and Ben's mission is getting the Death Star plans to Alderaan to Princess Leia's father. We never got, we got the, we haven't got the name of the character of Leia's dad or fake dad because her dad's also Darth Vader. You know, um, they try to keep it as a surprise. Um, anyway, so, 
So they kind of bought the, they kind of bought the planet because basically Leia is basically keep, trying to keep everyone safe because not lo knowing, given the location of the Re the Rebel Alliance, and also, yeah, yeah, it's supposedly, yeah, I think like in one scene after the stormtroopers kidnap Leia, Leia says, you know, I'm part of the Senate, Senate, I got a appointed mission to Alderaan, and Darth Vader says. You are a rebel alliance and a traitor. Um, you know, yeah, I, I seen that. I seen that uh, David Prowse video. You know, he, he, I like. Uh, you know, I don't like. He's okay, but um, yeah, he's, yeah. If they just say you just you're not you're not part of the Senate. You're, you're part of the rebel alliance. You know. I think he's trying to. T they're trying to they're trying to blow up. You know, Princess Leia's whole home world of Alderaan. If they don't, if they're not telling where the location of. The Rebel Alliance, and I think she said like giving them a planet. It says Dantooine. I can't remember what the name. Yeah, Dantooine. But they just say, oh, well, let's blow up the planet anyway. And I know it's trying. To, it, it, she took a double whammy in this um, movie. The ones that don't want to give out the location, but at the same time don't want to like putting her own planet in jeopardy. But her home planet was in jeopardy. They blow up the planet. Never seen like a scene how Leia's for a Leia's facial re reaction after her, her home world is now destroyed. It's nothing, nothing more than just asteroid fields. Um, I played the game St Lego Star Wars. You know the um, the old classic movies. Um, after they did after the you know the Death Star blow Alderaan, Leia cried. It's just like. It's, it was not quite polished, but it, if I was writing it, I'd rather have Leia just crying upset because that would really make the um, the Empire uh, more more hate. We go back when Owen and Beru are dead. Luke saw them pile of skeletons. I think they got obliterated by the stormtroopers. Seen that scene and when the Empire blow up Alderaan with one blast of the Death Star, it shows then the people of the Empire, they're just cold-hearted people. They don't care about you, they don't care about me, they just care about ruling the entire galaxy, whether it's personal or private, making the fans hate the Empire even more. You get some people liking the Empire, it's their opinion, but um, it gave Luke and Leia more motivation to stop them. And let's talk about the lightsaber fight between Vader and Ben Kenobi. Um, it's the only lightsaber fight in this movie. There's one, I think there's one line when Ben said, I think other shows reference it um, over the decades, whether from different genres, whether it's comedy, whether it's horror, what, drama, whatever. Um, yeah, Ben says, if you strike me down, I'll be more powerful than you ever imagined. And then when Luke, Leia, Han, I think Chewie, C, uh, C-3PO, and R2-D2 about to leave the Death Star, seeing Luke, seeing Ben fighting um, Vader, and seeing Vader, you know, be the one to kill him, you know, I'll get, I'll get to Revenge of the Sith in the future, but, um, you know, they fought before, but, um, when Vader hit, um, Ben in the head with the lightsaber, yeah, the, yeah, Luke with the reaction go, no! Yeah, that, no, we'll get to Luke's more reaction in Empire Strikes Back, that'll be next time, but, um, uh, Ben's death, I don't know, if, it, if Ben did survive, how is he going to fit in the rest of the story? Um, I don't know. I think Ben getting killed off was the right thing, you know. I don't know. I can't really say Ben, Luke, you know, Luke sees Ben like a father figure because of his age, because Alec Guinness, I don't know how old he at the time. I'm guessing he's around about 60 years old, 70, probably around 60, like late 50s, 60 era, age mark, but, um, he sees, you know, Luke sees, like, Ben as a grandfather figure. Ben takes Luke. I call him Ben. Yeah, Obi, but I call him Ben, but, um, 
Ben see your know, Ben took Luke under his wing, become a Jedi Knight. But it, it it gave him Luke more motivation to stop him. You know, he's just a you know Luke, let's get to Darth Vader, man. Darth Vader has got to be the most iconic villain in pop culture. I'm gonna say I'm gonna repeat myself in the further Star Wars movie movie reviews from the other two movies from you know one review um Empire Strikes Back and uh, Return of the Jedi, you know, he's just a cold-hearted person. He's just what it is, you know. You know, there's one, there was one scene in the beginning scenes of the film when Vader choked, uh, a, a really choked a rebel god, yeah, re a, a, a god of the rebel alliance to death by his bare hands, you know. And then later on, he choked one of his um. I can't call him suits and ties. They're wearing the same suit as Tarkin with his the choke force. He didn't use the choke force. You know, when Fighter does this with the hand, you go like ah ah ah. The, I think the two people did the two people in the in the Star Wars universe do that was yeah is um Fader slash Anakin and um, Kylo Ren. We'll get like I said, we'll get to that character, the Disney. Star Wars movies in the future, in the later on in the series, but um, you know, to see that he, he choked the guy to death, you know, that was the first death or multiple deaths of this movie scene, he choked that rebel guy to death. You know, it, it's just like, um, I don't know, disturbing, but it's just what it is making established Vader as the bad guy you want to kill. Um, yeah, yeah, when, when Tarkin says, you know, Vader release him. Vader says, "Ash, my wish." Um, can't remember the rest of the before the rest of the dialogue with that guy. I think he kind of confronting Vader. Um, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. You know, you know. Sometimes you know, when I, I can't, sometimes I can't remember the dialogue. It's like Jesus Christ, I can't remember. You know, when I'm reviewing superhero stuff, then yeah, let's move on, move on. So yeah, um. Let's talk about let's talk about John Williams in this movie. John Williams. Um, I haven't talked about in his. I haven't talked about him in this movie review so far. So, he's iconic. His musical scores are so iconic. Uh, without him, because he does multiple. I think he did multiple. Um, franchise. You know, as him as the composer, the Star Wars movies. Um, not all, but I think it was the old movies. Think the prequels, not the uh, the not the Disney Star Wars movies from recent years. That was someone else. To the Indiana Jones movies, I think he did the. Uh, I think he was head composer of the Superman movies. You know, in the seventies and the eighties. You know, like stars on um, Christopher Reeve, directed by Richard Dummer. Um, without him, I don't think these franchises are. Really, his franchise. He, I don't think these franchises all be that successful. But um, you know, go listen to some. You know, because uh, John Williams. I think he's still alive to this day. I think he's still alive. He might be dead. No, I don't think he's dead. I think he's still alive. But um, go listen to his musical scores in whether it's Indiana Jones, whether it's Star Wars. He did the the Superman main theme music, the Star Wars. Main theme music, da 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 Um, you know, his musical scores in these, in these movies, they told a great story without the words to say. Seeing like, there was one scene, seeing Luke. Yeah, that, 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 what, that scene I'm going to talk about is iconic. You know, seeing Luke, sleep, like, standing outside the house. Looking towards the two sons of Tatooine, going down. That's iconic. See the music. See the music in the background when the Millennium Falcon was. You know the chase. The chase scene when two um, you know the two Tie Fighters um, shooting at the Millennium Falcon. You know Luke and Han shoot, shoot, help stop that. Stop them. They you all know, take them down and and the end credit scene. Uh, not end credit, end credit scene. But the end scene when Luke and Leia. Um, not Luke and Leia. Luke and Han receive th their medals from Leia to end the movie. That was good, you know. Go, li go listen to John Williamson's musical score. Iconic. So, 
Anyway, so um, if there's I think there was major uh, let's go back to Ben's death. Yeah, he was just disappeared. You know, I heard like people were pissed off. In this is in two thousand seventeen. This was like forty years after the first movie. You know, Revenge of the not Revenge of the Sith, the, the Last Jedi, when uh, Kylo Ren killed uh, Luke, and Luke has disappeared. People were pissed off. I think it was good to see it. If see Luke, if Luke getting like just get cut in half, I'm gonna say again when I review the Last Jedi. If he gets killed, like got cut cut to hair, cut in half, that'd be fucking stupid. We'll get to I'll get to that in the future. But I'm um, seeing that like I think it's just referencing. It's just a reference, a callback to you know when Ben got killed. It's just what it is. I'll I'll, I'll say it again when I review the Last Jedi. So it's just what it is. You know. Um. I don't know. And speaking of the future movie, the future movies, there's legends that the the, the makers, you know, they had no I think they had no desire to make more movies after the first one because I uh, heard this movie did well in the box office. They got multiple, multi, was it multi, multi? I think that's seven awards. I mean, what multi awards? I'm trying to say. And yeah, I think it was in the Oscars or the Emmys. I don't know, but um, you know, people just like. You know, I think they had no desire um, making more. I think that would be a bad decision because people want to see more. People want to see, you know, people how is it gonna go out and it goes on to the end, until the end. Is it if the um the good guy is gonna win in the end or the bad guy is gonna win in the end? People want to see more. I mean, over the decades, people just like do not like the sequels. You know, not the not the the the. Movies, you know, episode five and episode six, but the prequels and the Disney ones. I don't want to get. I don't want to get into it. Um, because people really don't like the prequels. And I think the Disney Star Wars movies, not not Rogue, yeah, yeah, the Rogue One and you know, Force Awakening, Last Last Jedi, and Rise of the Skywalker. They were kind of like a mixed bag, you know. I'll get to my overall. I might do an overall Star Wars ranking movies to best to worst in the future. There's 11 movies. We're not going to get another Star Wars movie in the future because then we're focused on t you know Star Wars TV shows. You know the Man the Mandalorian. Was it was it the Man yeah the Mandalorian? You know with uh was focused on baby baby Yoda and Boba Fett and then the book of Boba Fett. I heard they're doing an Obi Wan Kenobi show. That I don't really want to talk about that. That's being the future. You know, there's, they focus more on Star Wars content, you know, more shows than movies. I think it's just, like, run out, run out, out of ideas of making more movies. So they're just, like, just, let's do shows instead, live-action shows. I don't know, like, The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. I haven't saw these shows yet. M might review review these uh, shows on this channel in the future, so. Um... There's one scene I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> this is my personal, my personal like, funny in my opinion, personal f funny scene. They're in the Millennium Falcon. You had um, uh, C-3PO and Chewie. They're playing like some kind of weird chest, I think. And then uh, C-3PO won, and Chewie got angry. Angry, sorry. Just a little, I'm stumbling by the way, but um. He had a Chewie go, Grrr, you know, I can't, can't do the Chewbacca sound. Um, yeah, Han says, you know, you don't want to make a Wookiee upset. You know, people don't care about droids getting upset. Droids don't pull their arms out of their sockets. Wookiee are known for that. And then, yeah, and C-3PO said to R2-D2, you know, new strategy. Let the Wookiee win. I kind of left that. And also, they kind of like, you got some brief comedy into it. Like, um... Basically, you had uh, Leia calling Chewie a walking copy. Yeah, Leia says, "Can you get this t her t was it walking copy away from me or out of my way?" And I think uh, this was after the escape, the garbage shoots. You know, it when when the the walls are closing in, and then after the walls have stopped closing in, you go the celebrating and C three PO says, "Oh my God, they're dying out there." I'm not fast enough my, I, with my robot body. You know, it, it was some, some of these lines are funny. I know it's like, you know, some of these insults, they're more funny. They're kind of, like, they're kind of good. Like, uh, yeah, Leia and Han not really getting along, you know. 
He said, you know, after the after the escape, you know, after like you know escape from the cell, you know, they're about to jump into the uh, the garbage chutes, you know. Leia said to Han, so when you get in, and do you do you realize how to get? Do you had you didn't have a plan to get out to get out? Sorry, I can't remember the dialogue that well. Jesus Christ, but um, uh, he said he said to um Han says, listen, listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you come from, but now on you, you listen. You have to you have to listen to me. Something like that. <laughs> and then uh, Han says, you know, the one person I'm gonna listen is me. And also he said to Luke, um, you know, the princess. She's got a lot of spirits. Do you think me and the princess? And Luke says no. I'm guessing he's referring to. Do you think me and me and the princess will, you know, get married? Something like that. And then. They end up getting married, you know, this is off screen, they end up having Ben, and Ben will become Kylo Ren in later life. Um, I kind of let, let, love my ass off, it's just what it is. Um, you know, they're not getting along, they end up, you know, getting, you know, falling in love, having a kid, you know, so on and so forth. And then and then both, and, and both got killed off in the Disney Star Wars movies from Force Awakening and Last Jedi, not, not Last Jedi, uh, you know, Luke got killed in The Last Jedi, you know, Rise of the Skywalker, you know, it's, you know, you got my drift. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so, I think that's it. Um, I think that's it. So, yeah, he had the, you know, Han killing Greedo, because he's on the run, because he's still on debt, he pay, he's still owning Jabba some money. And he, you know, Han shot him. It's just what it is. He's kind of like an anti-hero. I get it. You know, people think, you know, Han, Han killing uh, Gredo is stupid. No, it's just what it is, man. And seeing Luke, uh, Ben killing, they're in the bar, you know, Luke was kind of having a drink. And then some guy, there's a guy who looks like a pig. There's one guy, who, oh, an alien creature, who's turquoise. He has, like, like balls around his um chin not like it's not like peter griffin's chin you know pe people taking a pit yeah some people say this you know yeah peter you know you, you see if you watch family guy you know peter has like balls looks like he has chin his chin looks like balls you know like the creatures has like three or four chins around his around its neck and it's funny like um yeah ben just like basically attacked her and saved him he didn't do nothing, you know. <laughs> if only, like, I, I might review the Star Wars Family Guy parody, the parody fa Star Wars parodies. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, Chris was portray portraying but Luke, uh, Chris was portraying Luke Skywalker, and these k guy confronted him, says, he doesn't like you. Sorry. And I don't like you. And then uh, and Chris says, you don't even know me. In this, he says, alright, I'm stay I'm staying out of trouble, but he's, He's not looking for trouble. He just want to. I think mean, they just want to pick a fight. You know. I think he, that guy. The guy looks like a pig. Says, "I'm fa I, you know, I'm facing death in twelve sentences and was it twelve systems? Uh, blah blah blah. And yeah, he chopped. I think he chopped one of it. Chopped the um alien with balls around his chin, arm off. You know. You know. You can tell like it's. I don't mind like the body part like getting cut off. It's just what it is. As a kid. You know, it's not like, oh, think of the children, please. Someone is, you know, think of the children. It's not like, they're not catering to that um society yet, you know, compared to right now. Um, but that's it. You know, I like the dog fights. You know, actually a dog fight, but like the, the you know, the ships are like, shooting each other when, like, the Rebel Alliance trying to, sh like, blow up the Death Star. Instead of going to Alderaan, and, uh, I don't know what the planet's called. Anyway, so there's one memorable scene. They, I think, Final Guy referenced it in their episodes when Luke says, "You know, the Re Rebel pilot says, um, this is impossible." Luke says, "That's not impossible. I ball sight, uh, ball sight, swamp rats with my two, what, a T16. I'm guessing it's the, the 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 vehicle. I'm guessing. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I like the. I think like those dog fights. You know." The the air the spaceship fights the more like they expire they kind of expire the um the battle the airplane battles from World War Two I'm not gonna get into it let's move on so 
Anyway, so, yeah, the CGI stuff was good. It was, some people thought it's a mixed bag, you know, the, I think the 1997 CGI mo movies, or the, the re-edits re of the original movies was a disappointment, but I think the old four one's a bit better. But anyway, but it looks good. Um, anyway, it was good. Um, let's get to the ending part. Seeing like, um, Luke and Han receive their medals by Princess Leia, it's a good way to end the, um, the show. Of the movie. It's a good way to end the movie because they just say, not really necessarily save the day, they kind of won the battle for now. You know, they got like a, a lot of things to go and, um, you know, the, the good, you know, the victory music uh, in the background is good. And also the one, the one, the one music I forgot to mention is the Cantonina band. I like that, you know, uh, I think that Team America played that music in that movie. You know, I'll get to, I need to review Team America, man, that's a good movie, but, um, they reference Star Wars in this, um, film, in that movie with the Cantonina band. You know, I've got to mention that, you know, when I talk about John Williams, so. But, um, yeah, I, I think I, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up, man. So, yeah, it's a good movie. Um, there are bad movies, I might do a ranking of the, um, the old movies to so best and worst in the future. It's similar to what I did to the Marvel movies from fa All Three Faces. That's in the future, but now I hope you enjoyed my review of Star Wars Episode 4 The New Hope. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below, smash the like button, click the bell, and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube for more wrestling videos, superheroes, and now Star Wars videos, and more. So yeah, next time will be, maybe in two weeks time, yeah, two weeks time, probably, it likely will be at the end of the month, I'm going to review Star Wars Episode 5. The Empire's Strikes Back, so can't wait. So this is a sentiment official signing out. Check you later guys. I'm out. Peace.